Good morning. <laughs> Welcome to the last day of the conference. My name is Lukas, and I'll be talking about a performance compiler and how and my journey <coughs> of integrating a Ruby on Rails application with performance compiler. So I'll explain a little bit of what performance compiler is, and then I'll deep dive into the uh, integration. So this is more talk about lesson learned, lessons learned about in, during the integration um, with uh, with the PCP. So uh, the object, the subject of the talk is the foreman, which is the I like to say server for uh, sorry software for server management. Uh, it has a lot, a lot of features. It's open source project. Uh, it's as I've said, written on Ruby on Rails. We do have a booth there uh, in the main hall. So stop by if you're interested. I want to go into the details. And uh, my motivation was um, <coughs> uh, Red Hat sells a Satellite 6 product, uh, which is based on the foreman, uh, except it's in red color and all, with all the documentation and stuff. And uh, my pet project was to improve uh, performance monitoring of satellites. Uh, and, and so I was seeking for some solution, something simple that customers can install, and which is not complex to, uh, to deploy. And uh, PCP looks like a great tool for the job. Um, so what is Performance Copilot or PCP? It is, I like to say, uh, different monitoring software. It is, uh, is a different in a, uh, in a way that in standard uh, monitoring solutions you have <coughs> managed nodes or moni monitored nodes and then the software itself, and then some kind of database, which is completely separate entity. So uh, most of the software uh, uses uh, non-relation databases, or although some of them do use RDBM, is, uh, and <coughs> but this is the design. Uh, so the problem is the database is tightly coupled to the software, and you can't you know get away from it, uh, and you need to you know, deploy and manage both, uh, which can be challenging, uh, you know, um, if we want to um, <coughs> go after a performance issue, uh, I don't want to tell the customers, hey, install Nagios or install Prometheus or install something very complex. I don't just want to, to have something, some tool that is available on the server and which can be used. And that is ex <coughs> actually PCP case. PCP uh, does not have any kind of database. It does have a daemon that does the monitoring, and uh, there is another daemon that uh, if you opt in, you can actually store the metrics, uh, the readings of the, of the monitoring in what's called archive files. So these are just similar to log files, but these are binary, binary files. And then you can easily take the archive N and send it over email or whatever, and we can take a look, which is great. So, in short, PCP is an open source framework, basically, uh, or toolkit, I should say, for monitoring and uh, analyzing performance uh, data. It has a lot of features, and I just have, I, I just pinpointed a few. It's very lightweight, which I really like. It's just four megabytes RPM, probably, or, it, or any kind of package is very small. And distributed, you can basically monitor a single in node, multiple nodes, you can deploy various, various strategies, uh, you, you can opt in uh, collecting archives or, or on all hosts or several hosts, depends on your setup. And it's in all range of distributions and you don't need any, any kind of external database, which is great. Uh, it it pr provides basic metrics type, which all the monitoring solutions do provide, uh, but it also includes units, which is pretty nice because I've seen many times that you have some graph and you see millions of units and you don't know if these are IOs by s per second, you know, kilobytes, megabytes, you're not sure. And PCP has this uh, in the metadata, so it shows you correctly if that's bytes per second or kilobytes per second, megabytes, it will you know, recalculate that for you, which is great. You can uh, do live on historical data, obviously, it is a very high resolution, uh, so um, 
there's one upstream user who, who uses uh, PCP, which is Netflix, and they are doing a lot of, I guess, high resolution um, light monitoring. Um, so it scales pretty well, I guess. Um, and one of the nice features is hot port monitoring. You can opt in some processes which are you, which you are mo most interested in. For example, a process that utilizes the I/O a little bit or CPU, and then PCP can gather more data uh, from those processes. So you don't need to gather them all. That would be uh, too much of data. You can export and integrate with third parties. There, there, there's a couple of command line tools, or out, I should say many command line tools for analysis and stuff, which I really like because I don't need to install anything on my um, PC or laptop to analyze the data. I don't need to install database or something. You just run the tool and see the results. And a couple of uh, graphical tools. We'll, um, I'll show some screenshots. Agents, of course. Uh, plus 100 packages or engines in Fedora and good documentation and it's actually pretty old I mean stable plus 20 years of existence it roots is in uh, um, in SGI at SGI which is still a company that does a lot of HPC computing and the overall design is pretty simple you have the main daemon which is called PMCD uh, collecting daemon stands for the collecting daemons in CD and then you have a couple of agents um, which are running usually as sub-processes. The PMCD manage them all. Um, so they do the actual performance collecting. Um, and then you have uh, consumers which are usually utilities. So PM chart, PM stat, PM logger. PM logger especially, it's actually a daemon. And if you run it, if you enable it, it starts collecting the metrics you configure uh, to archive files. So you don't need to uh, gather metrics into archive files if you don't want to. That's completely optional. And then all the same tools, which is great, uh, let's say PMstat is one of the command line tools, can, be, can work live, connecting to the PMCD, local or remote, or we can also uh, load the, load the archive file, which is great. Good morning. So here's a trivial example of uh, such a PMDA agent. As you can see, it's pretty much simple. It's very similar to any other monitoring software. You just do some initialization, and just then you have a callback. So the callback is called every second, every 10 minutes, whatever. Uh, and that's, that's the place where you do the collecting of data. Uh, Note the block add metric here, and uh, here are the units. So in this case, it's counter actually. I'm, I'm telling telling the PCP that this is a counter, and I'm counting, you know, in the like uh, second units. Here's an example of uh, a tool. PCP comes with a variety of command line tools, which I really prefer. But if you're into graphical tools, uh, PM chart, PM chart, I think it's the, it's the, it's the tool. This is a Qt application. It runs on Linux. It runs on. It should run on Mac, I guess. Uh, doesn't run on uh, Windows, I guess. And you can easily correlate the uh, stuff. Uh, works pretty well. There is this uh, play, pause, rewind set of buttons you can use. So if you have an archive file which you gathered from a running instance, you can load it up into PCP chart and just you know go back in time and you know rewind and stuff. Uh, it's very very nice. Uh, then um, uh, PCP itself comes with a couple of graphical dashboards, I should say. Those come with uh, in separate packages. So the PCP package is called PCP on both Fedora and Debian systems. Uh, uh, if you want uh, one of those, you need to install Web API Daemon and then the Web, API, Web App Grafana or Vector. Uh, those, those are the two. I think there is one, one another. I'm not sure. I've only used these two and just enable the daemon and it runs on a weird port, of course. Uh, just uh, open a firewall and then what you're getting is uh, if you go to slash Grafana, uh, if you know Grafana is a, a JavaScript framework for doing a lot of graphs, you know, doing graphing and 
the way it works is the PM WebD daemon emulates Grafana API. So basically Grafana, JSON, sorry, Grafana JavaScript thinks it's talking to Grafana API, but it's actually talking to uh, PCP. And PCP provides the data, so you can easily have the data. And the way it works is for Grafana, it's actually reading those uh, historical data from archive files. So <coughs> you can go back in, you know, like one year or something and just, you know, see, see it. The disadvantage of this approach is you are not getting the live data, like past seconds, past 10, past 10 seconds. It appears here after a minute or two, after the PM logger actually writes the data into the archive files, which is, you know, it, which is fine. If you want actually the live data, there's this, another tool called Vector. This is uh, provided by Netflix, which is, uh, as I've said, um, one of the major users of PCP, and this is actually the opposite. It doesn't read any data from archive files, so archive files, something like database, but PCP uses archive files, something like log files, but binary. This is actually pointing to the PMCD and reading the values from there, so it can only show, it won't show any historical data, it just, once you connect there, it starts, you know, uh, uh, you know, plotting the numbers and just, you need to wait 15 minutes until you get something like that, something like this. So that's Vector. All right. Okay, go ahead. Uh, is Vector only used for live data or can also somehow get data from some stored value and you can use it as an uh, interface for uh, historical data? No, you, you actually can't. They, they, they are very opinionated about this. They want to see the live data only. Okay. So you need to use Grafana for that. Or, of course, command line tools, which I'm going to show you because uh, very much uh, how do I, here, can you read it? Uh, so the, the PMCD is the daemon you run, as again, PCP is very lightweight, that's what I, what I like it, and also it's included in RHEL 7 and 6 by default, which is great, because uh, it's in base repositories, uh, it has a couple of packages in optional, but if you use CentOS or Fedora, it's there. If you use Debian or any kind of Debian distribution, so any major distribution is there. So you need the, uh, to start the PMC, then that's it. As, as you can see, it it's also spawns several agents, uh, which you can configure. You know, by default, it spawns a couple of agents there. And then the, one of the nice commands is PCP, which if you run PCP, it shows you some kind of overall what's, what's going on, host name, how many disks you have and stuff and if PCP is running or not, and then agents which are enabled. Uh, PCP uh, organize, organizes the metrics uh, in uh, a tree, in a hierarchy, uh, separated by dots. PM info is one of the main commands you use to list all the metrics. You can actually read and, and you know, plot. Uh, I'm grabbing actually the, everything that starts with, which contains these partitions. So as you can see, it's pretty obvious what these mean, I guess. Uh, you can see a, a little bit more of information. As I've said, PCP maintains in the me metadata uh, units. Uh, I mean, um, units um, and data type and units. So it can actually show you uh, uh, nicely formatted uh, output like in kilobytes, megabytes, uh, you know, human readable output actually. Um, and if I provide a little bit more information, uh, PCP uh, is using this um, technique called instances. It's nothing new. Many other uh, monitoring software does this. Uh, so obviously partitions, we have multiple partitions, so you, you, you don't want to create a metric for each individual partition, which this can change a lot. Uh, so every metric can have multiple partitions, uh, sorry, multiple instances, which you refer by numbers or uh, strings. So here we have uh, two partitions on this uh, server. Um, the same goes for, for example, this is, uh, this is kernel all load, which is obviously a load, and we have 1, 5, and 15 minutes, right? <clears throat> and here's an example of how you can read, actually, some data. So I'm, I'm doing a pmval command, and I'm telling it a, uh, which uh, metric I want to see, and uh, optionally I can specify partitions, I mean instances, and well, it will do until I, I do uh, control C, I've specified I want to see five seconds, five examples. It gathers one, you know, by each second by default. PCP, if you connect live. Um, so PMVAL is nice, but uh, 
PMstat is, if you know VMstat, Linux command, is a very similar interface. So if you're familiar with VMstat, you need to just quickly show what's going on. PMstat is the tool of choice. It, it works the same way. As I've said, all the tools you see here can actually work with archive files too. So if you downloaded an archive file from, or your customer sent you an archive file from yesterday, you can actually specify dash A and, and the archive file and you can go back in time and you know, seek, which is great. You know, this is pretty unique. I like that. If you know IOSTAT, obviously, there's another tool, and I like this approach, PCPDEV kind of don't reinvent the wheel, and if you're familiar with Unix tools, they will provide you the PCP versions of them, so VMSTAT, IOSTAT, it's pretty similar. It's not the same, they don't, do not aim for the total compatibility, but it works. So I have an archive file recorded like a couple of days ago, so this is how archive file looks like, it's just a binary blob with some metadata. And I'll tell this another tool, which is PM Log Summary, which is able to calculate you summaries, calculate your average values and uh, stuff. So I'm telling it, okay, from 9 to 9.15 in the morning, calculate me some, you know, general uh, average values for this partitions read, uh, read bytes. So this, this is actually my uh, workstation, so I have a couple of partitions here. So from here I can tell that it was like, this is my main it was, uh, on average, it was, is that writing or reading, I'm not sure, reading uh, 14, 15 megabytes per second on average within this time frame. Now, if you're familiar with ATOP, look on this. It is, this is ATOP, basically running and then asking the PCP, actually, it's not ATOP, it's rewritten ATOP. Uh, and you can do this again, go back in time and, you know, seek. So, if you have an archive file, this is, this is great. You can see which um, processes are actually uh, you know, doing some stuff. As you can see, I don't see uh, details, you know, all the processes collecting that would be, would generate a lot of data. But you can opt in, there is this, there is a, a way to do this, to actually tell P uh, the PCP to gather either all of the processes or some of the processes. Um, so this is the same, but actually, um, uh, sorry, the, the Previous example was live. This is actually from the archive file. So here, here I missed the uh, list of processes. I can specify I want to see all the processes which uh, consumes more than one gigabyte of memory, and the PCP will gather the data for me. And here, here I can actually specify all the processes that contains Java. I want to include, you know, all the details. So I would see uh, the details in the in, in the ATOP. I don't have a root here, so uh, anyone, anyone or um, you can, of course, this is dynamic configuration. You, you want to put this into configuration file to, to have this persistent. And then if you know SAR, obviously there's another tool called ATOP SAR, which provides you some data in a SAR fashion. And there's a couple of other tools. There, there, there's a new tool as well uh, that you know, shows you a lot of data uh, in a nice, nice formatted way, but I won't uh, go into details. PCP.io is the main way, website, go there and uh, see it yourself. Uh, so, quickly, where's, uh, all time, all right. So, I said Ruby, yeah. So, I, we, had this, we have this nice uh, open source project called Foreman, uh, which is Ruby on Rails application. Now, PCP, uh, you can write agents in pretty much every single language except Ruby, of course, all right. So I was thinking like, okay, how do we appro approach this? Because I wanted to you know, see the data in PCP. So there are a couple of options. Uh, writing an agent, obviously the, the hardest way, instrumenting and then tracing. So there is a small, um, small agent called trace and it provides a very simple API. It's meant to be like for cron jobs. You can you know, send some metrics from cron jobs and stuff. So obviously, uh, obviously I made a PCP trace gem, Ruby gem which fulfills this API. Uh, you just need to install a couple of dependencies because it's native, and, and this is how you use it. Obviously, this, this didn't work well. You know, the, uh, you know, announced a new project, of course. Uh, not a single day you ever announced a new open source project, but the, the PCP dev told me that this API is actually being depreciated. So it was not good, you know, uh, try. So instrumenting is another way of uh, 
get, gathering data from uh, applications. So there's a memory map value API kind of, you, you can create a memory web uh, file and then the PCP, there's a MMV agent which reads those values, it's pretty fast. And I was thinking like it's a good fit. Again, Ruby don't have any library. So uh, I was thinking like uh, writing, writing uh, native uh, MMV Ruby, but then I found that there is a Golang library called Speed, which was a Google sum of, of project two years ago, and it provides me everything I need. So actually I wrote, a, and I was thinking like, uh, since, the, uh, since the PCP is pool mechanism, and we have, uh, for Ruby, you, you, you obviously need to spawn multiple processes because Ruby doesn't work well with the multi, multi-threaded. Actually, the libraries don't, 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 are not safe, uh, thread safe. So I was thinking like pushing those data from the Ruby application as soon as possible. And I found this UDP protocol, which is statsd. It's just a UDP packet, text page. You just send a metric number and the type. MS stands for uh, milliseconds, like uh, time, duration, gauge and counter, and then, then that was the idea, to write a, write a library which, is, which I called, or it's a daemon, PCP MMV stats D, which is a terrible name, I know, and, but it works, it listens UDP packets from stats D, and it's kind, kind of using, using the MMV API to you know, push them into a PCP. And this is how Formal in, is integrated today. So you need to run another daemon and PCP and daemon and, and Formal, and you can get those uh, internal, uh, I say telemetry, yeah, very internal numbers from the application, like what is performing well and what does not. So again, I know, hey, uh, new, new project, but you know, the PCP devs told me, okay, MMV is not probably the best way. It was meant to do the instrumentation of actually applications in C, C++ and Java and, and Go. So I, was think, I, I thought this is a temporary solution. So finally, I'm able to announce that uh, I'm mentoring a diploma thesis at Pulaski University, a student is implementing a, a fully, uh, fully um, featured PMDA agent, which will be PMDA stats D, probably its name. It will be high performance, C coded, multi threaded, pluggable, and which HDID histogram support. So, you know, if you're, if you're working with count, if you're working with uh, uh, time data, you need to obviously aggregate the data and do some, uh, usually histograms is the answer in, in uh, monitoring. And it will be basically, it will replace both Trace API, which is appreciated now, and the MMV space daemon, which I wrote. And hopefully the next year we'll have, or this year we'll have a, a nice agent to do a monitoring of foreman. Second PCP will have a stats the agent, which is not available today, which is great. And everybody can profit. It's not just for the Ruby world. It, basically you can send the stats the packets from anything, like using Netscape from a shell script, right? You can easily send a like, cron job, how uh, the cron job is actually performing or how long it takes, which is great. So yeah, that's it, you know. Um, they told me to put on some numbers, so like I, I was thinking one is good a number, like this was one lesson for me, like it's, it's evolution is still better than revolution. I learned a lot, uh, a lot along the way and finally I got there, hopefully we'll, go, we'll get there. Questions? How much time do we have? Five minutes? No, one minute. Yeah. So this talk is already available on this. Uh, I've pre-recorded a demo, like uh, my dry run is there, and also the slides should be available on, on somewhere. On my, I'll put it on my blog. Thanks for coming, and enjoy the last day of the conference. Thank you. <laughs>